In 2020, a seemingly ordinary post pops up on Reddit, but it quickly becomes clear that this post is anything but ordinary. It suggests a way for regular folks to make colossal gains while hedge funds lose billions. All they need to do is invest in a sinking company's stock. The internet joins forces, executing the plan with precision. And soon, the hedge funds start bleeding enormous amounts of money. It appears the little guys are winning. But a few days later, something peculiar happens. The most popular trading app, ironically called Robinhood, imposes a ban on purchasing that very stock. The world erupts into chaos, leaving a singular question in its wake. Who is the puppet master pulling the strings? The prime suspect? Ken Griffin. And Ken Griffin is a master at this game. As the man behind one of the most powerful hedge funds and market makers globally, he can literally manipulate the market in his favor, make billions and face no repercussions for it. Ken, you run at Citadel, a 30-odd billion dollar hedge fund, and you also operate the world's largest market maker. But how can one man wield so much power and influence, control the market's fate to the tune of billions? To be one of the great is going to require sacrifice. To understand this, we need to go back to October 15, 1968 in Boca Raton, Florida. The market is rarely dead wrong. And, and the history books are littered with people who are smarter than the market, who've lost all their money. Born into a wealthy environment, Ken Griffin has one goal, making a lot of money. With IBM Corp's dominance over the town, computers appear to be the golden ticket. So while still in high school, he teaches himself to become a pro programmer. By 11th grade, he's already running an education software firm from his own bedroom. I've always liked solving problems. And business is about solving problems to meet the needs of consumers. However, in 1986, Ken Griffin enters Harvard with dreams of conquering Wall Street. I, in the, in the dark ages of using a typewriter, I typed out about 13 different college applications. Okay, and so your chance of getting in each of them, you applied to 13 colleges or? Right, and I'll get into one of them, hopefully the best I can get into. Leveraged buyouts are all the rage, so he decides to be a banker. But then he stumbles upon something, an ordinary Forbes article, one that is about to change the course of his life. The article suggests that Home Shopping Network stock is overvalued. Griffin agrees. So he opens his first brokerage account and buys put options. But as he eagerly sells the options, Griffin realizes something. His payout falls short of what he expected. He asks his broker for an explanation, who tells him about Wall Street's bid-ask spread. Griffin is frustrated. His profit is lower and someone else pockets riskless gains. So he locks himself in the library for hours, devouring financial theories. And while he flips through Standard & Poor's stock guide, a hidden treasure catches his eye. Ken Griffin stumbles upon the little-known convertible bond market. When Griffin compares the prices of stocks and convertible bonds, he realizes something isn't right. The price relationships just don't make sense. To understand what's happening, he dials the local office of First Boston Corp. And what they tell him is unexpected. They admit it's a strategy they don't recommend to clients, but they use it themselves to make money. So during the summer break, Griffin finds himself discussing his trading theories about converts with a broker friend. As Griffin explains his vision, an unexpected listener quietly tunes in to their conversation. And this man is about to change Ken Griffin's life. The man is a wealthy retiree named Saul Golkin. After listening to Griffin for 15 minutes, he says, I've got to run to lunch. 
I'm in for 50. At first, Griffin is confused, but then he realizes that Golkin just agreed to invest $50,000. With Golkin's backing, Griffin aims even higher. He quickly raises $265,000 for a limited partnership called Convertible Hedge Fund No. 1, which includes investment from his grandmother. Having been involved in raising a VC fund in Shanghai myself, I know how difficult it is to gain your own grandmother as a limited partner. However, it won't be smooth sailing for Griffin, because in the fall of 1987, the stock market will be on the brink of one of its most devastating crashes, and Ken Griffin will find himself in a race against time. They're calling it the Monday Massacre, the worst drop in Wall Street history. Hour after hour today, wave after wave of selling hit the stock market. A selling panic, the professionals call it. Nineteen eighty seven's notorious Black Monday sends shock waves through the stock market. October nineteenth, nineteen eighty seven, a day that would come to be known as Black Monday. The Dow plunged twenty two point six percent. It had never happened before. It's still the biggest one-day percentage loss of all time. And Ken Griffin urgently needs up-to-the-minute stock quotes to navigate the impending chaos. For that, he requires a satellite dish. However, there's a problem. Harvard has a strict policy against students operating their own businesses on campus. But rules are meant to be broken. And Griffin isn't one to back down easily. He eventually convinces the authorities that his fund a Florida partnership qualifies as an off-campus activity. Once they give him the green light, Griffin mounts a satellite dish outside his window on the third floor, and he gets the feet just in time. The legend is that you began trading convertible bonds out of your dorm room. Is that true or not? That is true. Griffin, armed with his investment fund and a carefully chosen set of short positions, faces the market head-on. As chaos unfolds, he keeps a close eye on the live updates on his screen, expecting every unexpected change. And when the dust settles, Griffin emerges victorious. While other hedge fund managers grapple with widely publicized losses, Griffin not only stands unscathed, but also makes substantial gains. As news of his success spreads like wildfire, confidence in him skyrockets. Investors flock to support his financial wizardry. This enables Griffin to raise a staggering $750,000 for his next venture, convertible hedge fund number two. Raising follow-on rounds as quickly as possible, something any ambitious human being interested in increasing their net worth should do. With enough credits to graduate early, he contemplates joining the prestigious Palm Beach 3 fund, but ultimately decides to maintain his independence. During this time, Threes Adams introduces him to Frank Meyer, a hedge fund pioneer running Glenwood Investment Corp in Chicago. Meyer decides to give Griffin $1 million. What follows is so spectacular that it catches the New York Times attention. A one-year return of 70%. Frank Meyer is impressed. So the next year, he helps Griffin raise $4.6 million to start his very own hedge fund. And this marks the birth of one of the most legendary hedge funds the world has ever seen. On this channel we all know how desirable a career in high finance is today, mostly because that's one of the best paths to start a massive fund someday. And it's well paid too. But most candidates get rejected during the application phase each year. Before we dive into Ken Griffin's starting Citadel, let me show you how to get into finance jobs. Wall Street Oasis aims to solve this problem. They don't just have a funny community, they also have more than 17 years of experience helping students break into their dream high finance jobs. The success of their students speaks for itself, as they have landed positions at all of the top firms. With the academy you will get access to vast resources, including exclusive networking resources, courses and unlimited support. And it's not only for target school or 3.7 plus GPA students. They have helped applicants from all backgrounds to land that high finance job. In fact, they are so 
confident in the success of the program that they will give you a guarantee to receive a job offer in high finance or you get your money back. The onboarding process is very selective. So click the link in the description now to apply to the waitlist and you will be near the front of the line. Citadel Investment Group skyrockets to success, acquiring distressed assets. In the years that follow, his funds achieve remarkable returns of 43% in 1991 and 40% in 1992. As the early 2000s dawn, Ken Griffin establishes market maker Citadel Securities. It's a fitting evolution for a man who, once frustrated by Wall Street's bid-ask spread eating into his profits, now profits from traders, much like his younger self. Then, in 2002, the perfect storm hits, the infamous collapse of Enron. Citadel seizes this moment of vulnerability in the energy market, swiftly recruiting a team of former Enron traders. By 2003, at just 34 years old, Ken Griffin claims his spot as the youngest member of Forbes 400, flaunting a net worth of $650 million. The world is witnessing the rise of a true financial titan, but hidden in the shadows lurks an impending market crash. One that that threatens to push Citadel to the edge of collapse. In the mid-2000s, Citadel's assets reach a peak of $20 billion. However, the year 2008 brings one of the world's largest market crashes. In the midst of the economic crisis, with the collapse of Bear Stearns and Lehman Brothers, Citadel faces a financial crisis. As convertible bonds freeze and Citadel's assets plummet, Griffin takes a drastic step by putting up gates, preventing investors from withdrawing their money. The excessive leverage only magnifies the losses, with the two largest funds down 55% by year end. A lot of the businesses that we were in in, in 01, 02, 03, 04, 05, 06, 07 really availed themselves of the phenomenal growth in wholesale funding. Despite the scars of 2008, a secret strategy is about to make Citadel an unstoppable force beyond anyone's reach. In 2018, Citadel, under Ken Griffin's leadership, recruits a team of brilliant scientists and analysts with weather forecasts rivaling the pros. This strategic move becomes a crucial element in their ambitious plan to expand their $54 billion empire into the vast realm of commodities, spanning futures to physical trading. This audacious bet on raw materials is soon going to pay off and make Citadel the most powerful hedge fund to ever exist. But before that happens, Ken Griffin will have to face one of his deadliest enemies, Redditors. At the heart of this story is GameStop, a company facing a downturn in its performance. Hedge funds were waiting for GameStop to go bankrupt, and so they bet heavily against its stock, expecting its price to plummet to zero. Even as GameStop's stock price dropped to as low as $2.50, the hedge funds stubbornly clung to their short positions instead of closing them out. What they failed to realize is that their greed would result in their downfall. In a Reddit post titled Bankrupting Institutional Investors for Dummies, featuring GameStop, Redditor Player 896 lays out a plan. If GameStop's stock price goes up, it would mean big losses for hedge funds. But for the Redditors, the risk was low, so they start buying GameStop stock to drive up its price. GameStop quickly becomes the most traded stock in the USA. The stock's value soars by a mind-blowing 2000%. Hedge funds find themselves in an increasingly dire situation. They are hemorrhaging billions of dollars as the GameStop stock skyrockets. 
all the way to $500. Desperate to limit their losses, these hedge funds rush to buy back GameStop shares, which only fuels the stock's meteoric rise even further. This sets the stage for a ruthless short squeeze, obliterating billions of dollars from hedge fund portfolios. One such fund, Melvin Capital faces such dire straits that it requires a massive $2.75 billion bailout from Citadel to stay afloat. It seems like retail investors have emerged victorious, but the 28th of January brings a sudden twist. The Robinhood trading app bans the purchase of GameStop stock, citing insufficient collateral as the reason. However, many suspect otherwise and accuse Citadel Securities Ken Griffin of being involved in this decision. Allegations of market manipulation reverberate across the political spectrum, leading to a congressional hearing by the US House Committee on Financial Services. But that's not the end of it. Amid the GameStop short squeeze chaos, Citadel Securities becomes embroiled in a payment for order flow controversy with Robinhood. Ken Griffin vehemently denies all these allegations, dismissing them as absurd conspiracy theories. However, these obstacles don't hinder him, because Ken Griffin will capitalize on the war in Ukraine, amassing a staggering $16 billion in profits in 2022. In the chaos of the last year, Russia's aggression toward Ukraine shakes the markets to their core. This gives rise to concerns about sanctions and energy shortages. As prices surge in March and reach unprecedented heights in August, Citadel seizes a golden opportunity. After all, they have been in the commodities business for over a decade, hiring former Enron traders in 2002. The once quiet gas market springs to life with the easing of COVID-19 restrictions and Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine. This unpredictability, with prices initially surging in March and then reaching unprecedented levels in August, created numerous chances for profitable trading. And Citadel is perfectly poised to capitalize on this situation. Citadel's experts can easily track and analyze the supply of natural gas thanks to their large research teams. They can also access various gas prices from different locations in the US and beyond, which they can use for trading. But the real challenge lies elsewhere. They must predict the precise amount of gas people will need. This is where their weather forecast team comes into play. Comprised of weather experts armed with powerful computers, this team specializes in predicting weather events such as thunderstorms and tropical cyclones. They deliver this critical information to Citadel's traders. Their trading expertise, coupled with these precise weather forecasts, yields a staggering windfall of billions in profits for the firm. They amass an astonishing $16 billion, toppling Bridgewater from its perch to become the most successful hedge fund in history. Yet while the financial world marvels at Citadel's success, the question remains, who truly orchestrated the GameStop controversy? Was it the hand of Ken Griffin at work? And does he really make his billions through market manipulation? Whether Ken Griffin was truly the mastermind behind the GameStop saga remains a subject of debate. Citadel maintains its innocence, asserting that they haven't violated any laws. Currently, the SEC is investigating Citadel securities for their alleged involvement with findings pending and charges uncertain. Yet, this entire episode indeed raises critical questions about the power of Wall Street firms in influencing stock prices and the fairness of financial markets for retail investors. While the resolution of this saga remains shrouded in uncertainty, one figure stands at its center. Ken Griffin. His motives, actions and the chilling aftermath leave a lasting, haunting impact on the financial world. It leaves us with lingering questions about the power dynamics in modern financial markets. And speaking about financial markets, don't miss our documentary on the man who solved financial markets and who makes Warren Buffett's returns look like an absolute amateur.